Oh, I didn't see you there. Today, friends, I'm going to take you on a journey. The year is 1789. Europe is a place of trial and turmoil, kings and queens, magic and mystery. Today, I'll take you through the French Revolution. 18th century France was in an economic crisis following the Seven Year War and the American Revolution. The majority taxes fell on the lowest class while most of the nobility was exempt. Although people were starving, the nobility and royalty lived lavishly with their privileges intact. Let them eat cake. In May of 1789, Jacques Necker insisted that Louis XVI summon the Estates General for the first time since 1614. The first estate included the clergy, the second estate the nobility, and the third estate was comprised of peasants and laborers. Protests initiated as the third estate was overruled and mistreated by the clergy and nobility. Tension grew within the Estates General. The third estate officially broke away and proclaimed itself the National Assembly. In doing so, it granted itself control over taxation. Shortly thereafter, many members of the other estates joined the cause. Blaming him for the failure of the Estates General, Louis XVI dismissed Director General of Finance Jacques Necker. Necker was a very popular figure, and when the word of the dismissal reached the public, hostilities spiked yet again. In light of rising tension, a scramble for arms broke out. On July 14, 1789, citizens on the side of the National Assembly stormed the Bastille, a medieval fortress and prison in Paris. The French revolutionaries slaughtered the guards and mounted their heads on pikes. As the Assembly secured control over the capital, it seemed as if peace might still prevail. The previous governmental council was exiled and Necker was reinstated. To bolster the defense of the assembly, the Marquis de Lafayette, a noble, assembled a collection of citizens into the French National Guard. Although some blood had already been shed, the revolution seemed to be subsiding and safely in the hands of the people. On August 26th, 1789, the assembly issued the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen, a document that guaranteed due process in judicial matters and established sovereignty among the French people. All was well. In late June 1791, Louis XVI and his late family attempted to escape to the Austrian border, where they were supposed to meet the Austrian army and arrange an attack on the revolutionaries. However, the runaway party was caught just before reaching the border and brought back to Tuileries in Paris. In September 1791, the National Assembly released its much-anticipated Constitution of 1791, which created a constitutional monarchy. The Constitution also succeeded in limiting the nobility as a legal order and struck down monopolies and guilds. It established a poll tax and barred servants from voting, ensuring that control of the country stayed firmly in the hands of the middle class. In the autumn of 1792, the revolutionary government, having written off the ideas of a constitutional monarchy, set about electing a national convention of delegates to oversee the country. In late September, therefore, the first election took place under the rules of the Constitution of 1791. The first action of the convention on September 21st, 1792 was to abolish the monarchy. The next day, the Republic of France was created. As a sign of the Republic's newfound resolve and contempt for the monarchy, the next proposal before the National Convention was the execution of Louis XVI. Louis XVI was ultimately found guilty of treason and, on January 21st, 1793, executed at the guillotine. Months later, on October 16th, 1793, his wife, Marie Antoinette, met the same fate. In the weeks after the execution of the king, the internal and external wars in France considered to grow. Prussian and Austrian forces pushed into the French countryside. Maximilien Robespierre, a French lawyer, politician, and heartthrob, harnessed the fury of the peasants to take control of the convention. In the autumn of 1793, the government instituted its infamous campaign against internal opposition known as the Reign of Terror. 
Beginning in September, Robespierre, under the auspices of the Committee of Public Safety, began pointing an accusing finger at anyone whose beliefs seemed to be counter-revolutionary. A rash of executions ensued in Paris and soon spread to smaller towns and rural areas. During the nine-month period that followed, anywhere from 15,000 to 50,000 French citizens were beheaded at the guillotine. Oh, Robespierre. <laughs> As the mortuary started to fill up, the commoners shifted their focus from equality to peace. Robespierre no longer had a justification for his extreme actions in the name of public safety. On July 27, 1794, a group of Jacobin allies arrested Robespierre. Receiving the same treatment that he had mandated for his enemies, he lost his head at the guillotine this following day. With Robespierre out of the picture, a number of the Bourgeois who had been repressed under the reign of terror burst back onto the scene of the National Convention in the late summer of 1794. These moderates freed many of the Jacobins' prisoners, neutralized the power of the Committee for Public Safety, and had many of Robespierre's cohorts executed in a movement that became known as the Thermidorian Reaction. During the period from 1795 to 1799 in particular, the French army was nearly unstoppable and continued blazing its way into foreign countries and annexing land. Napoleon Bonaparte Pert, a young military leader in charge of French forces in Italy and then Egypt, won considerable fame for himself with a series of brilliant victories and also amassed incredible support as he tore through Europe. A large, victorious French army lowered unemployment with France and guaranteed soldiers a steady paycheck to buy the goods they needed to survive. The Directory hoped this increase in income would encourage an increase in demand, stimulating the French economy. As the government's credibility took a turn for the worse, so too did French military fortunes. Large majorities of the French public began calling for home, at peace, and a- <coughs> Thank you. In May 1799, the Council of 500 elected Emmanuel Joseph Sieyès to the directory. Sieyès, however, did not want to keep his newfound power for himself and he enlisted the aid of Napoleon, with whom he began to plan a military coup to topple the very same director on which Sieyès himself served. This coup materialized on November 9th, 1799, when Napoleon, who had returned to France, overthrew the directory the next day. Napoleon dissolved in legislature and instituted himself as first consul, the leader of a military dictatorship. By imposing this state of military rule that would grip France for 15 years, Napoleon effectively ended the French Revolution. Well, well, wasn't that quite a tale? Death, mayhem, and a little bit of French. Have a good night, America. Closer. Okay. Two, one. <laughs> 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 <laughs>